came back there and told somebody, you don't go to look for foreign investor. Anybody who does is going around the world to look for foreign investor is wasting everybody's time. Foreign investor is like bee and honey. If you put honey here, how the bee will come in, nobody will tell you. I told you Macron finished G20 meeting, flew to Bangladesh, because Bangladesh has just ordered 10 Airbus 350. So you have to go and see them, because they're coming. If you look at all the coming analysis, go and Google where Bangladesh will be in 2030, where they will be in 2050. Nobody knows where we're going to be. With all this lying, uh, joke, and everything, and people think it's about A or B or C. No. A deputy governor was just asked, you didn't go to school. He said, it doesn't matter. But you filled it. You were the one who said, I went to this school. Nobody forced you. If you, if you know it doesn't matter, you would have said, I didn't go to school. So we imagine your ingenuity as somebody who didn't go to school and was able to come up to this. But don't say things. We have now reached a country where, like Ben said, where people say something and do something else. I asked a woman to queue. He told me, whenever I queue, I don't get anything. This happened to me last year. So whenever I queue, I don't get anything. And after the, 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 the tribunal decided our case, I called the woman and I said, I'm sorry. Whenever I queue, I don't get anything. Because we had somebody going around the world saying this is how he's going to conduct the election. Everywhere he goes, he said, real, it was the night that I heard what was called real time. Suddenly, he said, no, he can do it anyhow. Why didn't you tell us this anyhow? So that we can behave anyhow when we are voting as well. That is your country. That is what Ben is preaching today. Labour Party, PDP, APM, they have the local standing to sue. Yet, the PEPC, I don't know where they got that, their own law from, said they didn't have the local standing. My question is then, who has? If they don't, who has? Because no aspirant has the local stand to sue on the issue of vice president. The vice presidential issue did not emerge from primary of a political party. The vice presidential issue is not a pre-election matter. As a matter of fact, we have 14 days to bring up pre-election issue after the primary election. The presidential candidate has till 90 days before the election to choose. So if you say the issue of vice presidential nomination is a pre-election matter, it would have even the time for you to go to court would have even been gone before he is appointed. So you see, it is not based on the law. This is law. This is logic. This is clear thought. The issue of double nomination, look at the logicality of what they say. They say there was a letter written 6th July by the Kynek has chosen, assuming Kynek exercised the discretion to give themselves the law that mandates them to do it in a particular way. And you, the court again, is coming to say it's discretionary. Look at the contradiction. Assuming by their own judgment, transmission is discretionary. And then the court agreed. INEC said they would transmit electronically. The court agreed. INEC did not transmit electronically. And the court now came from nowhere and said it doesn't matter. So, either way, the judgment is illogical. It does not flow from the law. And Supreme Court has made it clear. You know, Yotola and INEC. In other words, if you like, call it Yotola and Adeleke. The Oshun Guba election. He said, as the names depict, and I'm talking about page 24 of the lead judgment by a man. But you would have a chance 
after certain definite period to change your leaders if you don't want them or to sustain them if you do want them so what brings down democracy is the inability of the people to change their leaders or sustain them whenever they wish remembering that free fair credible and periodic election is the main pillar of democracy without which there can be no democracy the reason you have queues in africa now is not because of bad leadership it's not because of corruption it is because the people from that country have been denied of their rights either through rigging of elections or through satiety in other words no election in the first place and when the people become frustrated they would have no other choice than to employ force because those who make peaceful change impossible makes violent change inevitable so you see that is why we are pleading that is why we are preaching that we must ensure that in nigeria we have free fair credible and periodic election that's the only thing that can sustain our democracy whether you talk about gabon whether you talk about niger whether you talk about mali whether you talk about Burkina faso whether you talk about guinea the reasons for the cute guitar there are simple satiety and rigging of election even the gabonese school leader made it clear it was because the elections were rigged that a man can rule a country for 50 something years is because there is either no election or elections are rigged having said that coming back to nigeria we had election in Edo, we had election in Anambra, we had election in Ondo. Nobody questioned the results of INEC. Nobody went to court, strictly speaking, to challenge the results. In Edo, as tense as the situation was, an incumbent that just defected from a party to another party won and nobody took him to court because of the result because he was credible the results were uploaded on INEC result viewing portal like they promised everybody saw it the only reason they went to court is to challenge the qualification of basic which was thrown out same thing in Anambra the runner up did not even bother going to court the elections we are credible uploaded from polling units transmitted electronically in real time the whole world saw it so you don't need to tell anybody who won the election the people will be telling you who won the election the same thing happened in the ondo they did not go to court to challenge the result of INEC. they went to challenge that bunu who signed the form was not supposed to all these things failed they had peace because the election was credible INEC did what they promised electronic transmission of results was employed beavers was deployed and results uploaded in real time from the polling units and collation was done by verifying the manually collected results with the electronically transmitted result and the public saw them and approved them and that was where what raised the confidence in the people that the election of 2023 was going to be free fair credible and that everybody who partakes in it will come out 
satisfied. Unfortunately, on the 25th of February, I neck some assaulted in all the things they promised. Professor Yakubu Mahmoud and this is okay. The mouthpiece that went around telling people, trust us. Electronic transmission is mandatory. We will do it. Mahmoud even said he will have television on top of his head. And as he's reading the manually collated results, you'll be watching the electronically transmitted result. And you know what? That is what the law says. Electoral Act 60, subsection 5 is very clear. That after the election, you transfer to the collation system in a manner prescribed by INEC. And in paragraph 38, I, I, I of the INEC regulations and guidelines for the conduct of election. INEC was very clear. On completion of the pooling 